Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Alfonso. I'm one of the national co-directors for Move to a Man, and it's a real honor to have you all joining us tonight for this Lovic training. Uh, so today we're going to be going over this agenda really quick uh, for just an overview. Uh, so we're going to be looking at some of the background of Move to a Man, as well as the lobbying, what it what it means and how you can schedule a lobby meeting, uh, forming a group, um, organizing for the meeting, and what is needed uh, during and after the meeting, as well as during uh, how to uh, prepare your agenda for those meetings and following up. And then at the end, we're gonna be having a section for Q&A in case that you have any questions or any comments that you wanna make. Uh, we use the uh, the stack uh, process for the participatory uh, the participatory participatory protocol. So in case that you want to participate in the Q&A, uh, please put your name in the chat and we will have um, a list of uh, who's going to be in the order you're going to be called on. You can also raise your Zoom hand and we will uh, put you on that stack. Um, so uh, Move to a Man is a coalition of hundreds of organizations and hundreds of thousands of individuals committed to social and economic justice, ending corporate rule, and building a vibrant democracy that is genuinely ac accountable to the people and not to corporate interest. And our principles are anti-oppression and solidarity building. Um, we also work in coalition and we are a movement building. We're trying to make a building uh, movement. Um, we are a grassroots organization dedicated to political education, and we are trying to keep our political and economic independence by uh, never receiving funding from any big corporations, only small donors, and we are very proud of that. So um, our main goal is to pass the We the People Amendment, and that would make it clear that artificial entities do not have constitutional rights and that money should not be considered a form of free speech. We are trying to provoke a discussion and organizing about how to make real the American promise of democracy through a constitutional renewal. And the way we are trying to amend the constitution is through Congress getting two thirds of both houses, uh, that is house, the house and the Senate. And we need to uh, we need that in order to pass a resolution, and then as well we need to get a three fourth of the states to ratify, which means that is thirty eight states in total. Uh, there is also uh, another means to uh, amending the constitution, and that would be a, to a constitutional convention, in which case uh, you would need two thirds of the state leg legislatures to call for a convention and then propose an amendment. Um, Additionally, we would need three fourths of the states to ratify uh, th that amendment. So those are the two um, uh, ways that um, an amendment proposal can be done. Uh, we are opting for the Congress. So, uh, right now we have uh, 61 um, co-sponsors and we are trying to get to 100 in this congression, congressional session. And the strategy that we're do, using is uh, building a coalition, reaching out to other organizations that are working on similar issues and, and or that are affected by corporate power. And we are building a broad and diverse multiracial and integral generation movement, reaching out to those most affected by corporate rule. We're also uh, trying to organize a community, not just activism. We are focused on grassroots organizing to pass local and state resolutions calling for an amendment. And at the core of Mutual Men's structure, again, we are uh, grassroots. We are uh, uh, comprised of affiliate, um, uh, affiliate groups all across the nation, as well as advocates and working groups. Um, at the national level, we are a, a small team comprised, comprised of only six uh, staff members, but we also have uh, interns and a fellow that just joined us this, uh, this semester, and we are really happy with them. Oh, let's go back. Uh, so yes, uh, we are covering um, a, a variety of issues in sector. Uh, uh, we have caucuses and committees like uh, the Labor Caucus, 
and the Law and Research Committee. Um, and you can find more about those in the, on our website. And we also are working on uh, various coalition projects. Our flagship campaign, as y'all know, is the We the People Amendment. And currently in this uh, 118th Congress, it was introduced as HJR 54. Um, and it, it's pretty simple. It just makes clear that artificial entities such as corporations do not have constitutional rights and that money is not free speech. Um, and then a third section was added to make sure clear that nothing in this amendment should be construed to abridge the freedom of press, of course, which is also protected under the First Amendment. There are currently, as of this morning, 61 co-sponsors, which is more than we've ever had at this um, in this juncture of a Congress. So it's been inter introduced, um, I believe, six times. Um, and this is the sixth time. And every time we build on what we had before, because you know we're this is a um, this is a marathon, right? Not a sprint. Um, there is a link here if you would like to learn more about the language and to see if your um, member is a sponsor, you could go to move to amend.org um, slash amendment and it'll have all the information you need there. Um, so lobbying, that's where we're at. Um, and that's why we're all here. And a lobbying of course gets a bad name, but you know, in, reality, in reality, this is how we connect with our elected representatives. And um, people lobbying their representatives is actually um, how we participate, a way that we can participate in our democracy, right? So that's lawfully attempting to influence the actions, policies, and decisions of government officials, most often legislators or members of the regulatory agencies. Um, so when we go in, we're volunteers um, going in, hopefully to educate and to relationship build with our elected officials and um, appropriate those actions. And, and, you know, because we want them to do the bidding and represent us, right? The first step in lobbying um, in, in our process, and if you haven't yet, um, and you plan to lobby your um, elected official, please go to move to amend.org slash 118 and uh, 118 campaign and sign up. That's the first step. The second step um, is scheduling a lobby meeting. This is really easy. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of consistency, but what you're gonna do is just call uh, your local office and ask for the scheduler. Um, and then you send a follow-up email if needed. Some folks will have you, um, some offices have you go fill out a form, for example. You're gonna ask for a meeting with your rep and, and be prepared to discuss the issue and why it's so important that you meet. Be flexible with their date and time. The goal is like 30 minutes. That's usually about the most that you'll get. Um, and you're asking to meet with either the representative or their legislative uh, director if possible. And then um, ask when you'll have an answer because you, know, you don't want um, there to be an open-ended part about that. So it's always nice to just ask. Um, if there's no answer by that date, then to call them and ask for a response and, um, and when you'll have an answer. Is still no Dan, then you can be consistent. That is the key to getting um, their attention because you know they are busy. If um, you wanna repeat as often as necessary, only accept an aid, um, a local, uh, local office director is preferable, um, you know, their legislative director. Um, and then there is, we have links under that page where you would sign up at 118 that has um, all kinds of instructions on how to set up a lobby meeting. Um, I wanna introduce a couple of, you know, really solid volunteers, um, experienced now lobbyists um, in our ranks. Uh, Deborah Hogshead, uh, she's from Troy, Ohio. And sorry about that, my voice is cracking here. And um, Margaret Coster, uh, she's another longtime uh, we the People Amendment supporter and um, an amazing lobbyist as well. Um, 
I, I kind of want to turn it over to y'all. What kind of experiences have y'all had trying to schedule lobby meetings with your elected officials? You, uh, uh, should I call on one first? <laughs> Go ahead, Deb, and then Margaret. <laughs> we'll and we'll volley back and forth. My apologies. Okay, so uh, I guess I'll go go first this time. Um, we live in a very red area, and it is very hard to get an appointment with the representative himself. Um, so we have typically had lobby meetings in, within the district with um, a district director or a field representative. So it it has been hard. Uh, called today to uh, schedule with our two representatives. We're our, because of gerrymandering, we now have two representatives in Miami County who are in the Congress. And uh, Representative Davidson's uh, staff said uh, it's, people are calling way in advance of August to schedule. So we may not get to see him in August. It might have to be another time. And when we called uh, Representative uh, Kerry's office, we were told that um, his appointments are already filled and the best they could do was a filled rep. So I'll pass to, to Margaret now. Thanks. So, um, so my experience has been quite different. Um, I was previously in Northern California. I've just I moved back to Southern California where I grew up um, a little over a year ago. So. Um, uh, getting an appointment. So first of all, you know, we're focusing on lobbying right now because Congress is in recess. So the representative should be in the district and having meetings. So it'd be really great if you could get a meeting with them. But I, I don't think it's a, a, um, uh, a disappointment to meet with an aide. Um, it, the aides in the district offices are more about um, providing services um, helping people to interact uh, with government agencies and stuff like that. They'll certainly take information about uh, policy questions and things that are coming up for a vote. Um, but if you get the ear of an aide and you get someone who's kind of sympathetic, they will pass it up. Um, and then if you're trying to lobby in Washington, D.C., um, getting the legislative director or an aide who's actually covering the issue area of what, however they've labeled it, democracy or money and politics or whatever, you know, they all have a, their own list of priority areas. But if you get the aide that's in that priority area, you're really making progress because that's somebody who um, is actually assigned to deal with, with that particular issue. So the first, you know, and then it, of course, it depends if they've ever heard of Move to Men before or the We the People Amendment. So you, you need to know what you are, uh, how ignorant or how knowledgeable they are. And even people that are knowledgeable make mistakes. They don't quite fully get it. Um, so that's important. It, it helps a lot to do a lot of research ahead of time, um, who the representative's donors are what their uh, voting record is, what their pet issues are, um, and see if there's a way to link your presentation into that pass. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, yeah, moving a little bit ahead of us. Um, we're, we're still on just scheduling the meeting, but doing that groundwork beforehand is also important so that you can even form your, um, your letter and your request to kind of tailor what that office is doing. Yeah, um, and it's really- definitely, go ahead, sorry, Parker. It's really important to talk to the scheduler, not just the person who answers the phone. So like when I was uh, working in Mendocino County, if we wanted to schedule a meeting, um, we, we had to talk to the scheduler. And when we were dealing with state representatives, that meant we had to call Sacramento, talk to somebody there uh, who was actually doing the scheduling. And so don't rely on the person who answers the phone to pass your request. Try to talk to the scheduler. Absolutely. And again, like Margaret and Deb mentioned earlier that this is August recess. So this is when they're home and in districts. Um, so, you know, hopefully you'll be able to get in front of them and, and that has a lot more um, impact. 
and you know this is when they're home meeting with you know their their voters they're the people that they are going to congress to represent so um you got to let them know how you want them to represent you and how important this is um, so once you've scheduled that meeting, you need to form a group. And we suggest around three to six individuals. Um, MTAers will facilitate, move to amend will facilitate, um, and those willing to share their compelling stories. So that's really important um, to connect personally with your story as well when, um, when you're forming your group. Uh, you can also reach out to outside individuals and organization reps that have positive relationships. And this also shows um, the power that you have. So we do have um, endorsing organizations all over the country, perhaps in your district as well. Um, you do not wanna bring the person running against your rep. I've made that mistake before. Um, <laughs> Anybody that may have <laughs> anybody that may have a poor and I didn't realize it until we got in the meeting. Um, anybody that may have a poor relationship with the rep or um, any outside groups that the rep has uh, a poor relationship with. Do y'all have any um, experience with um, with that and the impacts of bringing the right people to the meeting um, that you might want to share, Margaret or Deb? Or, you go ahead. It's just like you say, Jenny, you know, bring, bring, well, one thing also is to bring somebody that's really knowledgeable about the We the People Amendment, you know, who's read it, who understands what it means, and who can answer questions. And if you, if they ask you a question you don't know the answer to, don't wing it. Tell them you don't know, and you'll get back to them. And then the national staff can always help you um, come up with the, with the right answer. Yeah, good point. And, you know, they they recognize that um, that you are, you know, just citizens, so you don't have to have all the answers. Either. It, it's perfectly, you know, natural and um, makes sense to let them know that you could get back to them on that. Did you want to weigh in on that, Deb? Uh, yeah, uh, I feel like I complain a lot because we're in such a red place and it is kind of hard for us to get uh, people like farmers and uh, small business owners to come with us to talk with our um, reps uh, because of the pressure in the community, uh, or at least that's my hypothesis, because we've asked people before to come with us uh, to tell their story about how they've been impacted by big ag and uh, big box stores. So it's, it's, that's been challenging for us where we are. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed that does work well for us is, uh, like you were saying, Jenny, have somebody very knowledgeable about um, the, the, our movement and the uh, proposed amendment. And it also seems to help to have everybody who's going really have like a two minute statement that that talks about something personal in their lives, whether it's um, health care, education, uh, what, whatever, uh, that connects to this idea of money and politics and corporate power. And those, um, the last time we did a lobby uh, with our rep, people share their stories and they were very compelling um, and moving. And I think that made a difference and helped um, really anchor, you know, what it is that we're doing. It's not some pie in the sky thing. I mean, it's, it really anchors that this is an issue that affects people. Um, and that, that's all I have for that. Yeah, no, excellent point. And um, I, you know, it, it, you want to have all the, the facts in order, but nothing, nothing appeals like that personal story. You know, that's how we connect this issue because we're on this journey with real people and, um, and showing that we're real people, I think is very, very important. So when you're, you, so now we have, um, we've scheduled a meeting and we have assembled the people that are coming to the, the group. Um, and we help with that. We have a database. Um, if, when you're ready, uh, we will help connect you with other people in your community as well. 
Um, and of course, you can reach out to your um, your peer group and your neighbors and people in the community that you think would um, would be a good match to come with you. So however we do it, those are one of the ways. And then of course, somebody from the national team will as well. And then um, materials to assemble. You're organizing for the meeting. You wanna have your amendment language. You wanna have your petition signers or your number that you have in the group. And again, we'll help you get that from the national team. Um, you wanna have a list of supporting organizations and resolutions with, that may be passed in your district. Again, I live in Pensacola, Florida. We have passed a resolution in Pensacola and in Escambia County um, and all over the state of Florida. Um, so again, this, um, this amendment resonates with um, people on, on any type of ideological spectrum because you know, nobody wants to be ruled by corporations. Um, also bringing the white paper which is an in-depth and thorough look and um, an argument for why we need the We the People Amendment. Uh, and there's also plenty of resources on our website um, of other further recommended uh, background and resources um, at your disposal. You can find those. Um, there is a doc linked here. Thank you, um, whoever shared that in the link or in the chat, that's super helpful. Um, and just emailing a few resources to the person before the meeting so that they kind of have a little bit of background um, is really important. Um, I wanna pass this over to Greg now as he gets more into depth about organizing the meeting um, in the prep. Are you well, still thanks, here, Jenny. Greg? I know he has good. Bad yep. Weather. Hello. Yeah. Thanks, Jenny. And uh, thank so. And thanks to all of you for uh, showing up, and uh, to Deb and Margaret for sharing their experiences. Uh, Greg Coleridge, one of the co-directors, along with Alfonso and uh, Jenny, um, at, at Move to Amend. So as we continue, uh, now we're sort of. It's really helpful. Not essential, but it really does make a difference if you're able to have a pre-meeting, doesn't have to be uh, in person, it can be a call. And we can help set that up, uh, a Zoom call, uh, with the other individuals that are going to physically meet with um, the aide or the representative, him, her, or themselves. For all kinds of purposes, just to introduce, help some camaraderie. Uh, it's a good way to kind of get a sense of what interests other people have in the in the community, and uh, hopefully by doing, uh, you you achieve a few things. One, just general introduction, you go over the materials, the talking points, the anticipated questions, all of which are um, available uh, on a link um, in preparation for the meeting. Um, another real important sort of when you get to the meeting, going to do what? Who's going to be sort of the the facilitator, the enabler, the moderator. Uh, it'd be good to have somebody else, if possible, to take notes. Just pretty much any questions that make any points that were raised that you think um, would be important to respond to in some way, shape, or form. You don't have to be ex extensive. You don't have to be a, a scribe of any uh, in, incredible detail. Um, then it's helpful to have a person. Again, it can be a different person, it can be one of the same, who is willing to describe the We the People Amendment, the basic just sort of tenets of it. Remember, you will have already sent the person you're meeting the language of the amendment. So hopefully who you're meeting with has had a chance to open it up and look at it for themselves, but never hurts to underscore uh, those tenets. Um, a presenter, another role here, again, doesn't have to be a different person. Uh, it can be the same of one of the other functions, that of who is going to be the person to present the degree of, if there is, of support in the organizations that have endorsed, uh, communities that have passed solutions or ballot initiatives, numbers of people in the district who have signed our Move to Amend petition, our motion, movetoamend.org forward slash motion. 
And then the last role, if you will, is someone uh, who is going to ask straight up, generally multiple times. At the beginning, that probably can be the facilitator, uh, but uh, also at the end, that can be the facilitator or somebody else who just straight up says, we hope that uh, you or your boss, if it's the aide, will in fact co-sponsor the amendment. Um, another, another purpose of bringing people together is, is to get sort of a sense of what it is that they're willing to speak on. Again, as Deb mentioned, a couple of minutes, again, you'll probably only have 30 minutes tops. So having people kind of talk out if they have thought about it, and if not, that's okay. That can be one of their bits of homework is what they're going to sort of share, uh, what story they have, personal story that uh, connects the We the People Amendment to issues or organizations or concern that they care about, communities or environmental realities, anything. Uh, as was previously mentioned earlier, it's helpful uh, at the prep meeting to sort of assign one to sort of check out their representatives' interests, priorities, views. The easiest place to find that is to go to their website and look on press releases, because that's where oftentimes they list things that they're proud of. They've introduced uh, a particular amendment, or they have co-sponsored something, or gotten money uh, from whatever bill was passed that's coming into the community for whatever it is. So to know that is something that you can thank that representative. It's always good to stroke people uh, right at the beginning of your call, uh, but it can also be whatever those parties are uh, can be integrated into uh, one's testimony. Uh, to go over the agenda, again, there is a template agenda on the website uh, to encourage show up. Really important to just, before you break, please encourage people to show up on time and be appropriately dressed, you know, flip-flops and um, uh, shorts and tank tops are okay for the beach, which you may be going to after the call, that's fine, or after the meeting, but not during the meeting. So, you know, it doesn't have to be a uh, suit and tie or, you know, formal uh, dress, but something that is, you know, appropriate. And finally, it's good beforehand. Some offices still require masks, some don't, but that's important to maybe check out before uh, showing up and then act accordingly. Okay, so Deb, Margaret, uh, start with Deb this time. Before going, if you can just go back um, to that, any comments on uh, prepping for the meeting or the call? Meeting in this case. Um, I think it's real important that people who are gonna be speaking and giving a personal statement really need to practice and, and make sure it is like two minutes or two and a half minutes. Uh, to, to help meet the requirements of, you know, a 30 minute appointment. So that is um, real critical. Uh, I did want to mention that among the um, things to take that you should prepare to take for a meeting, uh, particularly if you're talking with a Republican or um, um, the handouts that Move to Amend has created for why this is a conservative issue and not just a, a liberal issue. And also, uh, I think among um, uh, those representatives who are Democrats, the, the, a question that always comes up, what about nonprofits? Shouldn't they be exempt? So I would encourage taking the handout that's available on uh, why nonprofits don't need um, uh, constitutional rights. Um, anything else that I would add? I think this all looks good. I, you know, the, the preparing have, you know, I don't have anything else to add except, you know, that two minute, two and a half minute personal statement. People really nail that down. And it's okay to read it. It's okay to read it. Better to read it than to ramble on like I'm doing right now. So I pass. You're not very, <laughs> very, very articulate. Margaret. So um, I agree with everything Deb said. And also, um, sometimes when I'm, I've had lobby prep with people, we'll actually do, I, I guess, what you'd call a dress rehearsal. We'll each go in order. You know, the facilitator will call on us. We'll read our statements. Um, there's usually some kind of a personal introduction, like your name, where you live, how long you've been involved with Move to Men, what your profession is or was. Um, and... Um, 
And sometimes that can include, you know, why you're involved with Move to Amend. Um, yeah, then everything it says on here. And then, when you know, once you look up what their voting record is um, and also anything that they've introduced, um, you know, then you can thank them for their interest in that area, even if you don't agree with their position. Um, it does two things, you know, people always appreciate being appreciated and also lets them know that you're paying attention, that you know what they're about. Yeah, very true. The only other thing to say on this is, um, you know, depending on the number of people you take with you uh, can determine the amount of time people can speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in meetings where there's like eight or nine people that are willing to, you know, they really wanted to speak to their rep. So in that case, like two minutes tops. Uh, but the other thing about it is reality is, look, if you've got one or two more people to go and you've reached the 30 minute, now sometimes it truly is the case that they've only got 30 minutes, but they will just say that because they don't want people to just ramble on and to think like you got all day. But again, if they know, okay, I mean, they're counting, right? Fingers, toes, and the like. And if there's one or two people left, they're not going to cut you off. They're going to allow those one or two people to go. But still, that should not be a green light to just ramble, but just to say that, um, yeah, the goal is 30 minute. But if you're connecting with them and they understand and appreciate that, hey, you're serious people and you're competent people, they're going to let you go. Unless it maybe is someone who from the get go is hostile. But if that's the case, they probably wouldn't have agreed to a meeting anyway. Just one other thing, Greg, about the number of people. It partly depends on the size of the room and the number of chairs. So you want to check that out too, because uh, surprisingly, their offices usually are not very big. Right, right. Though in general, it always is great to have SRO, standing room only, because it gives a sense of, wow, people, if you have 10 people in a room, they can only see five versus 15 people in a room that can seat 50, it almost seems like the, wow, the 10 people in the room, that, or the five people in the room that can seat uh, uh, the other way around. Uh, the 10 people in the room, five, seems like, wow, I mean, you're just like, you know, overflowing at the rim of support. So there is a psychological dimension to it as well. Okay, next uh, next slide. All right, this is a tricky one. It's optional. Uh, some groups have done it, others have not. It's a way to sort of reinforce, to complement or supplement. That's the intent, not to compete or counter or to be counterproductive. But it's sort of your call, a read on your part of whether this would be helpful or not. And that is to organize either prior to the meeting or at the same time that some people go inside, there are still people outside. So anyway, the two ways to do this is sometimes there is an effort to the day of the meeting to, and we can help you know set this up and do it, is to send out an email to everybody in the congressional district saying that, hey, we understand, you know, and asking people to call with a script saying, understand that that person is going to be meeting with um, a move to amend uh, move to amend representatives to talk about the we the people amendment we hope representatives such and such endorses and co-sponsors uh, that's before the meeting you know that morning before the actual meeting and, you know that can generate even if it generates yeah again it's relative right if people are only if offices are only accustomed to getting two calls per day on an issue and you get five calls again you're like overwhelming the system so it's all relative, but in some congressional offices, you know, they're getting 10 calls a day on the same topic. And if you get 10 calls, you're not really lifting, you're not really being noticed. So again, it's all relative. Uh, it's your call. You don't want ne people necessarily to be negative toward it. That generally is not going to be perceived as negative as potentially doing something. You know, you bring 10 people and as, you know, Deb or uh, uh, Margaret said, you can only see five. Well, the other five people may be outside doing an informational uh, presence, having a flyer, move to my flyer that you're handing out, encourage, or having our, uh, maybe you've seen the flag, the corporate flag saying support, you know, we the people amendment, uh, HR, whatever, um, is, is helpful. 
uh, can be informative in passing out information to people maybe going in and out of the building, particularly if the congressional office is in a building where you get a lot of traffic, giving information going in and coming out is, is helpful uh, conceivably in that person who may be a friend to an aide, to the aide that you're meeting with, that later that day or tomorrow saying, hey, you know, I got one of these flyers from people who were standing outside uh, yesterday. Oh, well, that's when I met with the aide or that's when I met with these people. So it really is your call about whether you want to do that. The other sort of thing that can be done is trying to time your meeting with a letter to the editor um, or anything else that can generate publicity. So uh, Margaret, Deb, any thoughts on this, whether you try to do any of these? Um, well, one thing about letters to the editor, it, it you know, really it, some papers will publish almost anything. I Where I lived before was a small town and they would pretty much publish any letter um, as long as you had a local address. Um, but then in, in big, you know, bigger newspapers, bigger towns, it's a lot harder to get a letter published. But there's two things you can do. Um, one is link it to a news story that's in the paper this week, um, if, if you can find one. And the other thing I would suggest is after the meeting, uh, writing a letter to the editor saying, we really want to thank representative so-and-so for meeting with us. This is what we talked about in the meeting. Uh, Deb? Yeah, I, I really like that idea. Uh, and, and I do want to say that I continue to learn and uh, get good ideas from, from these kind of Zoom meetings. What we're thinking about doing is um, doing an email blast to uh, the constituents, uh, to our supporters who are also constituents of our two reps, and asking them if, if nothing else, in addition to calling, uh, the uh, district office. Also consider writing a little personal statement that we could take and share uh, uh, in a packet with the uh, with each representative. Um, we don't expect to have a lot of luck with our uh, reps, um, it, but we just keep pushing. Uh, but we do know that both of them are going to be attending uh, on August 24th, a State of the Nation luncheon sponsored by the, the Area Chamber of Commerce. So uh, we're hoping that we're going to get um, uh, meetings with them or their staff before then, but we are also considering uh, showing up at that State of the Nation um, luncheon, either attending the luncheon and asking questions and making our presence known or making our presence known outside more in a way like uh, is shown in this um, image you have on this slide. So a lot of good ideas, thank you. And that's okay. all. Okay, yep, next slide. There's just a couple more. So we'll kind of run through these quickly and then we can uh, take your questions, comments. Uh, so here's sort of a sample uh, agenda uh, for the meeting itself. Uh, people introduce themselves as was previously mentioned, name where they live, if they're, involved in any organizations or have any interest uh, issue-wise. Thank the rep or the aide for a vote on an issue or something that they have uh, introduced in uh, Congress. Ask, uh, you know, again here, one of the roles, uh, we want you to co-sponsor HJR 54, the We the People Amendment. That'll be asked again. Then somebody briefly describe the amendment, uh, remind them of previous sent resources, share the support of uh, Again, all the co-sponsors, local organizational endorse, all the stuff that you gathered beforehand in your previous uh, meeting and doing research. Uh, the sample agenda is uh, uh, listed on that link and I think it has been previously um, put in the chat and it should be said after this call, uh, we'll, we will uh, uh, prepare this and send out a link to uh, this uh, video but also we'll make sure that the individual links that are embedded in the video will also be listed so that you can go right there. But a lot of them, again, are at that original move to amend.org forward slash 118 uh, campaign. Uh, okay, next slide. 
because we have still an agenda. Next slide, this is the second half. Um, so again, sharing your stories from each person, minutes, depending on how many people are part of your group, basically trying to intersect, interface um, what their concerns are with the fact that we're not able to achieve what it is I want that, that we desire in our community because money is uh, free speech and corporation, a corporation is a person. Again, restate your ask that we want the rep to co-sponsor We the People Amendment. Ask if there's any questions, as Margaret said before. You know, don't fake it or don't wing it. If you're not sure about what's asked, say we'll, and uh, then you can, you know, look things up or get in touch with us and we'll um, uh, get that to you. Just say, you know, we'll follow up shortly. And actually, that's a good excuse, right? When you say we'll follow up shortly, that's an opportunity then to get back you know, like in a week, let's say, with to, to the question they had with the resource that they may have requested. And oh, by the way, have you had a chance to meet with your boss, your rep, um, and find out if uh, they have co-sponsored and then thank them for the meeting. So, um, Margaret, Dad, any comments on meeting agenda? Um, not on the agenda, but one thing uh, we did is um, to make a packet. So we we I spent a little money. It's blurry on my screen. I don't know about. Yeah, it is blurry. Okay, so but a different cut. It was a, one of those notebooks with pockets, different color for every page. We had a um, table of contents in the front, and then we included things uh, that we printed out from the website including um, the timeline uh, and um, the uh, one about um, questions and answers for America's business people about uh, about an amendment. So anything you think that, and I don't know, it cost us, we got this notebook put together at a, a print shop and I think it cost us about a few dollars a, a copy, but, um, you know, it's eye-catching. I mean, anything, it, it's a gimmick. So uh, it's all colored paper, eye-catching, has really good information in it. We left it behind. Um, I don't know if it had an effect or not, but it's information. Right. Cool. Yeah, um, and I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Having that packet to uh, share when we're in the office, in addition to the few things you might send by email, having that packet, it it, it looks familiar or, or it looks professional. It looks like you know what you're doing, uh, whether they actually ever look at it. You know, you know, you can't control that. But I certainly feel much more confident going into a meeting when we're able to hand a professional looking packet uh, off to the rep or to the uh, staff. Yes, yeah, good. And the packet could be basically if you want to you know, make it more basic, just a file folder, you know, open up with the with the pockets and you put some of the items one side or the other or in the middle. Um, on colored paper. Yeah, on colored paper. OK, I think <laughs> last uh, second to last slide here is all right. After the meeting, send a thank you uh, email information requests to the rep aid and uh, some people like to actually send in the physical mail, snail mail, a thank you note. That's sort of a real classy thing. Who gets mail these days? You know, used to be, wow, I got an email. Now it's like, wow, I actually got a letter. Uh, so, I mean, that will stand out, right? That will stand out and uh, can go a long way to, again, you're trying in part to develop rapport, relationship, sort of a personal relationship as well as a professional one of showing that them that you know what you're talking about. And quite honestly, if you look at some of these links and, and read some of this information and sort of understand some of this information, you will know more than the aid and probably four fifths of the reps that you meet with if you have a chance to meet with them because they just don't know this stuff. All this stuff has been buried and moved to, has been unearthing this. So, you know, the professionalism, Ability, but also the, the personal touch of de developing a relationship and sending a thank you note that can go a long way. Uh, you can also then send an email blast, you, you know, give people a week or so asking them to, you know, for the first time, hey, uh, uh, X number of people met last Tuesday with uh, such and such a rep.
please call the office and ask, uh, you know, find out uh, uh, when representatives such and such is going to co-sponsor. We hope the aide has had a chance to share this with uh, their boss. And if they don't follow through yet, then a couple of weeks, do it again and be persistent. And I like to alternate asking people to, when you send out a blast, one time asking people to send it, next time asking people to call. So that they're sort of getting different, uh, you know, sort of mediums of communication. And again, all this information that we've talked about is at that link. Uh, Deb and Margaret. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, it doesn't take long to write an, a nice note, and I think it's a really good thing to do. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is the right place to say this, but, you know, lobby, I mean, in gen, so this is about lobbying reps during recess. So this is, you know, talking with the rep person to person. But any kind, it, you know, if you can talk with an aide, that helps. Also, um, we've done lobbying with um, our state assembly person and state senator and also our county board of supervisors for the um, pledge to amend, because some of those people are not always going to be in the office they're in. Like our state senator, who was our state, well, was still the state senator for our area up north, um, but now he's the majority leader in the state senate. And I will not be a bit surprised if he's in the House of Representatives someday. And he knows my face because we met with him in his, in his office, in his local office. That's great. That's impressive. Deb? Yeah. Uh, and Margaret earlier had talked about uh, the value of going ahead and talking to staffers if you, if you can't get um, the, the representative, him or herself. And, you know, I certainly agree with that because uh, they may run for office themselves one day. And so if they become familiar with the uh, the issues, then maybe they'll be more amenable to it when they are in office. Uh, also, uh, one of the things that we do here in uh, the Miami County area is we watch for when uh, our reps will be having uh, meetings, like a popular one for Warren Davidson is a farm forum. So I've been to a couple of those. And when he has a town hall meeting showing up, he, he knows my face uh, and his staff know, knows us. Um, and we're on a very cordial, we have a very fine relationship. He just hasn't come over to our side yet. But, um, you know, getting out there, building those relationships and continuing to just push, you know, just planting that seed, nourishing it and keeping it going. Uh, and I, again, I really appreciate all the new ideas I've heard tonight. And I want to thank the national team for putting this together and for Margaret for sharing her views. So I'll pass. You know. Yeah, just one last point before moving on. I think that makes a really good point. That, you know, it is the August recess. And so your goal is to try, obviously, to get a face to face with the rep. But if you can get the aid, that's fine. But that doesn't mean that that is the last opportunity to engage with that rep, uh, whether it's at town hall or if, uh, depending on who they are, a picnic fair. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff where they're trying to press the flesh. Uh, your county fair, they may show up at if that's in August. If it's a Democrat, then they'll probably be at the Labor Day parade. Sometimes Republicans will show up there as well. And so it's an opportunity to reinforce. We met with whatever the name of the aide is. And I don't know, did that person give you the packet? Well, I just want to reinforce, I hope you, re, you, know, you follow up and consider supporting. So anything you can do to follow up, it's multiple connection. You know, why people think Coke is it is because you hear it every single day, 50,000 times is it, Coke is it, or you are what you drive. After a while, you know what? I am what I drive. Well, of course they're funny, but if you've heard it, 5,000 times the propaganda of Madison Avenue does work. So repetition is really important. All right, last slide. It's just sort of a metaphor here. That is this, it's just sort of a hammer striking a, um, a piece of steel has been heated up. And the metaphor is that when a piece of steel is cold, it's not too easy, is it, to take a hammer and to try to mold it? But when it's heated up, when those free radicals happen, when you have sort of a heightened sense of reality of a condition, 
things then can become molded. When you have a stationary political situation, it's hard to bring change. But when things are in, when things are uncertain, when things are not cold, but hot, if you will, there is the opportunity, a wondrous opportunity to bring about change. Don't look now, but we are facing multiple situations where things are not constant, where things are not as they have been, where things are not quote unquote normal. That is in one sense chaotic. It is asserting. It is in some cases maybe even terrifying, but it is also incredibly opportunistic to bring about a change that people before maybe never considered thought was possible. But what one day has been impossible, another day history shows in this country inevitable. And so we think that given conditions the way they are, not that we're wishing for ill by any means, but the is of the crises and the challenges we face, that we can be that hammer, that striking of a, a political, uh, cultural uh, form of steel that is adaptable and is ready to be molded. And we need to be in that situation. We need to take advantage of that. And with your help, we can help you and you can help us bring about this, um, what we think will become a certainty sooner rather than later. If not, then we are in a whole heap of trouble. Uh, so uh, with that, thank you so much. And um, we can sort of open it up and take questions. And I think most importantly is, if you are interested and you can sort of at this point, Alfonso, open it up. Um, we been knowing, you know, any questions you have, any questions, uh, any comments you have, but most importantly, if you're interested in reaching out to your congressional office, put your name and uh, who your congressperson is in the chat. Um, Greg, I'd like to just add one thing while people are doing that. Um, it, it's really helpful as part of the presentation to not just talk about the problems that we're trying to solve, but talk about the opportunities for things to be better and have some examples of that of how the amendment will make progress on this or that issue much easier or bring about more fairness or whatever, mm -hmm. but not just not just the problems, but also the, the happy outcome. So maybe if we can end the screen share, then we can sort of see everyone. Well, there we go. Okay, questions? Jerry had his hand up. Yep, unmute yourself. Okay, hi. Um, very interesting, thank you very much. I just, uh, I joined the, the meeting and I've uh, been interested in this issue for quite a while, but I live in a district that is already supportive of it. So my interest is, how can I do something with Congress people who don't actually represent my district? Generally, if, when you call, I've, I've done this for other issues. Uh, the first question is, where do you live? Are you my constituent? And if you aren't, then uh, there's, a, a let's say, a lack of interest. So I guess I'm just asking, what's your suggestion? Anybody want to take that? <laughs> Yeah. Move to Men has uh, a database that the staff can can help you with, and uh, everybody that's in the database, which means they've signed the petition. Um, it it if we if that if they gave their address, their city and their zip code and their street address, um, I don't think it needs street address, just city and zip code. And we can sort by congressional district. So if there's a district next to you, um, you know, then Move to Men can help you uh, <laughs> find that list of everybody that lives in that district, help you craft an email to them, inviting them uh, to join you in, in getting a meeting and that, you, you know, you'll help them because you've done it and you've worked with your congressperson. So that's one way to start. 
And also meeting with state reps, you know, when it comes time for ratification, they're the ones that have to vote. So it's good to meet with them too and get them familiar with the issue. A uh, question for you, Jerry, if, uh, okay, you're on, on mute. Is there a congressional district next to you, above you, below you, that would be, you think, uh, game? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I live in San Francisco. So we're pretty much surrounded by like-minded representatives, uh, both at state and, and uh, national level. I, um, like I said, I've called a number of people on other issues in other districts, and I have been able to talk to them, say, but uh, it's a little impractical to, to uh, travel to Omaha to talk to Dan, Don Bacon or somebody. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi is not a co-sponsor of the We the People Amendment. When she was the Speaker of the House, she would not take positions on issues because of her role as Speaker. So actually, she needs to be lobbied. She is still your House representative. I can do. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. I, I didn't. Yes. I have to say. I Can you play it, Margaret? Yeah. Is that your rep, Jerry? Is that your rep? Yes. yes Pelosi? I that that would be a wonderful win if you could get her to co-sponsor. It would mean so much. Take that, my first name. <laughs> uh, Jerry, if you put your uh, e email in the chat, if you can do that, we'll uh, follow up with you. Um, okay. message here. Yep, cool. Um, anyone else? I have an email that's, uh, can you still hear me? Yes. Um, I'm already on your your list, I have an email there. Uh, I have a personal email that I would, you know, that I wouldn't want to have as the organization's email, but it's right. Have well, if you're already on it, just put that one just so that we don't have to look it up. Oh, okay. Well, okay. anyone else want to ask a question, comment? I'm just going to do that. I have a quick comment. Um, Jenny, mm -hmm. uh, I shared in the chat the um, pledge to amend that Margaret discussed. So when you're out, um, you know, at the picnics or at events, and there's uh, other candidates running as well, a good way to start developing a relationship before they even get into office is through the pledge to amend. Um, and you know, I won't even vote for somebody. Um, that doesn't take the pledge in my community. So, and I let them know that. And um, that's a great way to start a discussion with them and start engaging them with the information and educating them on corporate constitutional rights. So I put that in there as well. It's a way for candidates to weigh in prior to being elected. Um, well, I uh, just wanted to ask Ted or Richard, um, or Charlie, there's somebody on iPhone, if you have any questions or comments. I appreciate it, Greg. Uh, this is Charlie. And yes. I worked in the government for, and I, I, I'm trying to reach out because I'm becoming a little bit more active. I just finished with the U.S. Department of State as a Fulbright Specialist in International Security, and my last assignment was in Kosovo with uh, Serbia, which is very similar to the Russia with Ukraine and also China with Taiwan, uh, stating that the country that it broke off from the country, main country, believes that it's still it's their country. Uh, yeah. But I'm right. And I, I try to approach some of these international concerns because I worked in the White House in trade diplomacy under Clinton for three years, and I'm more international. However, I've been trying to become more domestic, and I even participated with our local election, or you could say domestic junction in state with uh, J.B. Pritzker, who's now in second term. But the first term, and going to my question here, he had certain values, and it might be just... Uh, how it works in politics and i'm finding out politics especially being a person who runs it's dirty game i i thought real estate and other and i was in law even and i thought those were bad 
you have to compromise your values before you even get the position of being elected. So it's like one of the, and then you don't really have any accountability. No one really overlooks them. You, you don't have to have much credentials. You just got to be 25 years old, seven years citizen and run in the district that you live in. And it's like, what is keeping these people from not uh, being, you could say that ends just by the means and have this kind of devil's advocate, kind of a brain saying that I always look the other way. So my two main questions to anyone who could help me here, because I am trying to become more active and change things because I haven't been getting certain results from talking with our officials and my uh, congressman is Bill Foster and we're in Illinois 11, District 11. It seems very difficult when you try to ask them why they are not doing something like particular thing with move here, move amendment. And I always thought that you're supposed to be for the people. It's because you're elected by the people. So my whole concern is what do you do when you have these politicians who pretty much play the game, will seem sincere when they're talking to you, but when it comes to the point of, like you're saying, making a vote, Margaret, or doing certain things, they kind of look the other way, or they they try to make some excuse to not do what they say they were going to do, or you get the famous quote, it's more complex than you think, or it's like very difficult. And I'm like, I'm not stupid. Tell I mean, I went to Harvard Law, Harvard Business. I'm not an idiot in learning. So explain it to me, teach me, but they won't do that. Or they're using it as an excuse to get away to avoid what they're supposed to be doing. And that leads to the second question. When you're lobbying or doing certain things, for example, uh, Foster was stating things that he's against opioid and he knows that it's a big problem with pharmaceutical industries lobbying for it. He votes against it. However, he took $39,000 in his last election from a pharmaceutical company and over 300000 of his campaign financing came from that industry. So how do you kind of overcome these things? And I, I don't really understand how to go about this. And I'm just seeking help, even though I have contacts and I have experience in the government. It just seems one of those things. What do you do when they're already kind of bought, you could say, from certain lobbies or they're playing this two faced double game on you? Uh, how many hours? Do you have? Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. You could just give me the gist or so in a contact. All right. Well, I think Margaret wants to take it. To become effective huh? because I could do things. Huh? I just need some, some guidance. Okay. Margaret's going to give you some guidance, and then others may have some additions as well. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, I, I know this fellow from Texas who used to like to quote Sam Rayburn. Uh, who said, when I feel the heat, I always see the light. Um, so part of it is, you know, organizing. These people are put in office by voters. If you get the voters organized and educated and interested, uh, you know, the numbers will tell. Uh, the other thing is a lot of these guys are lawyers um, and corporate personhood in the law is actually... Um, useful and we're not trying to get rid of the whole thing we're trying to get we're not trying to get rid of uh, corporate personhood to fall for purposes of following the law but we do think that corporations should not have the same inherent inalienable rights as people they should have statutory privileges which are subject to the democratic process um, and then the third thing is it's about who makes the decisions uh, who gets to decide what your health care is who gets to decide what's in your food and water who gets to decide what your transportation choices are? Uh, you know, who, who's making the decisions about your school books? And you know, it should be we the people. You know, corporations are useful, helpful ways of getting things made that we need to use. Uh, it's a great way of organizing resources to achieve ends, but that is completely different than being the one who, who gets to decide what's important and to have the decision-making authority. I'm done. I want to weigh in on that. Yes. I'd like to weigh in on it a little. Yep. 
Um, only to say that the system's rigged, um, it's fixed, and um, that is part of what we're doing here, right? We, we like to focus on the fact that corporations have these constitutional rights because that's what steamrolled into um, money having free speech. But we do know that um, the general election after Citizens United, um, the money that was spent in our elections, you know, really blew up. Um, and that was, I, 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 if I remember correctly, like $400 million. The runoff election um, for the Senate race in Georgia last year, what actually it was 300,000, excuse me, I've got it mixed up. And the runoff election in Georgia uh, for the one Senate race was $400 million. So the number um, ha have, you know, they, they're they playing the game because the system is rigged in favor of that game being played. That's that legalized um, bribery. And which is why the We the People Amendment is so important because that would turn that um, insane doctrine on its head, right? And it would allow us to, again, regulate um, that kind of money flow into our elections. But more to the point, writing those letters to the editor, like we had a rep who just was not hearing us. Um, and we got an article written in the paper. And before um, the end of the day, they had come on, on as a co-sponsor. So holding um, them accountable to their promises in a public light and shine in that light. I love that uh, quote you said, Margaret, that was perfect. Yep. Yeah, I'd be happy, uh, Charlie, to talk with you at some point. I mean, the, how I oftentimes look at it is, you know, it comes down to really one thing, one thing. <laughs> Power, right? That's what it is we're trying to create, democratic power. Either have to have organized money or organized people. If you don't have one, you sure as heck better have the other. And what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, <laughs> we've never had a real legitimate system of self-determination ever. Uh, people have been trying to strive for that uh, day one since they weren't included in the Constitution. So. It's a struggle, it's a challenge, it's in a sense never ending, and it's a process that is never ever achieved in terms of you know authentic self-determination, which we've never had. But we can get a heck of a, a heck of a lot closer than we are now by you know understanding the various forms of power, which is not just people, it's knowledge, it's skill. It's uh, understanding, it's you know, working with the media. It's um, personal courage and integrity. Think of those individual human beings throughout history that all by themselves have been witnesses to, you know, incredible and have self-sacrificed sometimes their own health, their own well-being. Uh, so there's certainly, but there's also personal integrity and, and uh and smart. I mean, there's so many sort of definitions of what it takes to inspire, organize, educate, advocate others uh, to come together. And, you know, there's also, you know, the relationship building. Sometimes you can win people over. I mean, part of what Deb is doing is trying to break down the incredible polarization that exists in our society now that's getting worse by just trying to go through that and developing, you know, a, a personal connection that you know, maybe that person will never uh, come aboard. But if you aren't, if you aren't able to from one human being to another, you'll never have that chance to get people to sort of reflect and question their own assumptions, as we might be able and should be able to reflect and correct and change our own assumptions by someone else who may, you know, start out being hateful or polar opposite. So there's just so many different levels and degrees of ways to bring about change. And so part of what we are is not just sort of lobbyists or educators or communicators or organizers, we're change agents. We're trying to just, we don't accept conditions as they are. 
because they're unjust in all of the forms. So anyway, um, be happy to sort of work with you to see if Bill Foster may be a movable. I don't know if he is or not. Um, Ted, Richard, iPhone person. Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk, ask a question. Um, I, me, I have come to realize, like I'm very into climate action, and I've come to realize that the only way we're going to get this solved is by getting money out of politics. It just, uh, that's the answer that keeps coming to me about everything, is that money in politics is, is what's happening. But I was wondering, um, are there other campaigns that are doing the same thing that you're doing? You know, other uh, organizations or something that may be uh, doing the same thing you're doing. And I'm just wondering about that. If you could both be doing the same thing, you know? Somebody you want to take that? because I'm unable to get rid of this power off my finger. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Um, to well, answer your... Go, oh, ahead. go ahead, Margaret. No, you go ahead first, and then I'll come. No. Uh, short answer. Um, there are some people that are focused on money and politics, um, or maybe like overturning Citizens United. Yeah. But... but Move to Amend is the only organization that is um, working to amend the Constitution to overturn the insane doctrines that have created this, you know, uh, a corporation is a person monster. Right. And, um, and money is free speech. Overturning Citizens United, that money is not equal free speech, that they are not the same, right? We have speech and we have money. Two different things um and so that's the short answer yeah okay i have a my congressman is david schweiker and i don't have a very good relationship with him um, what state arizona arizona it's david schweiker schweiker i think okay. anyhow uh my uh, senator, one of my two senators, one of them is Mark Kelly, which is really, I like him a lot. The other one is Kirsten Cinema, yeah. And she, she just got bought because she is not the same person I voted for when she ran for, for, against Martha McSally at the first. And uh, now she has just been bought. And I, I'm kind of worried that she's going to, uh, mess up the election by getting some of her followers to vote for her instead of uh, going for a, uh, I forget the guy's name. Uh, um, Mansion. Greg, yeah, Mansion. Yeah. Yeah, there are two peas in a pod these days, it seems. Yeah. But, well, appreciate uh, that. We can. Well, go ahead. Yeah, so to answer your question, uh, Richard, there are lots of organizations that are focusing on Citizens United. Um, and there's a little bit about corporations are not people without uh, addressing the money. But Move to Amend is the only one that's, well, first, the only one that's pushing for an amendment that uh, does overturn Citizens United and also deals with the whole issue of corporate rights. So Citizens United was in 2010. Yeah. Uh, the doctrine that money is speech was a Supreme Court ruling before that. And rulings about corporate personhood go all the way back to the late 19th century. So this is a problem that's been a long time in the making. And Move to Men, in my opinion, uh, has the most comprehensive approach and the one that will really uh, completely yeah, what did uh, deal you with say, the issue. Uh, going back to the 19th century, I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. The, the ruling, the Supreme Court rulings that have established that corporations have 
uh, human rights. Right. Um, goes back to the late 19th century. Wow. And that's why I find the timeline so effective as a teaching tool. So you can find the timeline on the website. Ted, what about you? Did you say Ted? No, I, I was asking Ted, who's got all these cool political buttons behind him as a background. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Uh, I don't have any questions, but uh, very, uh, very good information to share. Where do you live? Um, in Jupiter, Florida, Palm Beach County. Who's your rep? Brian Mast. I'm in northern Palm Beach County, so I got stuck with Brian Mast. Okay. It could be worse. We have Gates here. Matt Gates. Oh, my <laughs> condolences as well. <laughs> Well, anything else? Yes. yes. I would like to add some levity here. In the chat, I put a link to um, a video uh, of an original song by Mona Lisa Twins, and it's called I Bought Myself a Politician. And if you haven't seen it, it's, it's really good. It's re really catchy. And um, I think that part of our effort needs to go into the arts that, you know, there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of change comes through the arts. And so for something amusing, look in the chat, see the uh, link to, uh, I bought myself a politician. It's fun. Pass. Very good. Thanks for that. Well, Alfonso, you want to close us out? Uh, yeah, uh, so thank you all again for joining us today. Uh, we'll be sending out a copy of the recording as soon as available. Uh, you sign up for the uh, webinar. And yes, we'll be uh, following up with you all. I was taking notes and got uh, all the emails and information that was shared. So we will we'll be following up with you very soon. And thank you so much for joining. that simply want to use them. The truth is currently a fusion of corporate loot and our government that is outright abusive. People need change. The state, it refuses. They say if we're mistaken, well show us where the proof is. They control the media, movies, and the music and determine where supplies of the water and food live. We need a strategy. Here is a solution. Build a movement to give our rulers improvements. An infusion of human to counteract the hubris that has our ecosystem near useless and our youth. Pissed. The founding fathers were flawed, but they knew this. So they gave us the tools to move with. Let's use them. Move. Corporations are not people. Two. Money is not speech. Uh, men. In fact, it's the root of all life. Right now. And it's time to take to these streets. Move. Corporations are not people. Two. Money is not speech. Uh, men. In fact, it's the root of all life. Right now. So get on out of your seat. Citizens United is the lie. Corporation doesn't know life, nor does it die. Profits from the 100 richest fictions alone in one year can make all of poverty gone. The Republicans are lost. 
Democrats bought. Most American people have forgotten that we fought for health care, education, services, and safety. It wasn't kindness, it was war that ended slavery. Not advocating violence, but I am saying that lately a lot of folks is dying in ways that seem shady. A lot of students is hiding from debt that they can't beat and have to be excited about a future they can't see. It's not a climate crisis, it's a corporate crisis because a corporation can never know what life is. Only a human can. What's the solution then? Amend the Constitution or it's revolution, man? Ooh, corporations are not equal to money is not speech. Uh, men, in fact, it's the root of all right now. To us to educate and to reach. Ooh, corporations are not equal to money is not speech. Uh, men, in fact, it's the root of all right now. Which side of the fence you find your Hip hop never died, the corporation stole it and told us with bonus that we never owned it. They just loaned it out for the moment. It's the policy and culture matrix. When corporations shape it, only the profit told is sacred, though they stole to make them. We don't have the convenience of giving up. Gotta swallow all of the real, even if it comes from sippy cups. It's not a matter of political correctness. It's a matter of having the knowledge of what respect is. You can't defend humanity without joining it. This is our responsibility. Let's stop avoiding it. Institute love as a practice and overcoming the fascist to achieve the democratic economic and ecological collapse i am not being neurotic i simply offer the fact we the people are under a monster's attack it's time to rise open the eyes and take our democracy back Ooh, corporations are not equal to money is not all uh, men in fact it's the root of all right now we will not admit defeat Corporations are not evil too. Money is not speech. Men, in fact, it's the root of all.